Hi, this is Tom Fiddeman with Ventana Systems with a quick tutorial on running models in Vensim PLE and the Vensim Model Reader. Vensim PLE is simulation software for building and running models. It's free for evaluation, academic, and personal use, and inexpensive for commercial use. The Vensim Model Reader is a runtime package for running existing models, and it's also free. You can get them both by visiting vensim.com and following the download link to the free downloads page and filling out a quick download form. Check the anti-spam box, choose whether you want Vensim PLE or the model reader, and enter your name and a valid email address and you can opt out of mailing lists if you wish. We never share your information. If you are interested in both building and running models, you probably want Vensim PLE. If you're only interested in running an existing model and you need the capability to use sophisticated features like arrays, then you may want the Vensim model reader. We also provide an earlier version of Vensim PLE, version 511a, which may correspond better with older teaching materials. Once you've downloaded and installed the modeling package, start it up, and first we'll take a look at Vensim PLE. When you open PLE, it'll open with a previous model, but if you're starting for the first time, you'll have a blank workspace. Use the File menu to open the model that you're looking for. This will be an MDL VMF or VPM file. And there's your diagram. You'll find several toolbars. Immediately above the diagram is what we call the sketch toolbar with tools for modifying the model. We won't get into that in this video. That's the subject of another one of our tutorials. On the left are some analysis tools for looking at output and inspecting the structure of the model. We'll look at those in a moment. At the bottom are some controls for changing the formatting of the model and a menu for navigating through various views if the model has more than one. And finally, at the top, we have some controls for standard cut, copy, paste, and the key for this video the controls for actually running the model. You'll notice that someone has already run this model generating a, a, a data set called test. Let's do another quick run. I'm going to generate a base case for this model. So I use the simulation results file name field. I'll run my name, name my run base. And I'm just going to hit the simulate button to do an ordinary simulation. And you can see that that has appeared on my graph as the blue line. When I created that run, what I really did was to generate an output file containing the numerical results. And I can see that if I visit the control panel. I'm going to give myself a little more room and shift to the data sets tab. And here you see that I have runs called base and test, and these correspond to the base and test that I see on my graphs. And I can double click these or use the left and right arrows to either reorder them or to move them to active or inactive viewing status. So things on the left are inactive and things on the right are active with respect to what I see when I use tools and model to generate output. So I'm going to keep both of these runs loaded with base first. When I'm browsing results, and I'll just uh, close this control panel for the moment, I can do two things. One is I can use the on-screen graphics if the model has them. 
The other thing I can do is simply select a variable that's of interest. So I'm going to pick births and just click on it. And you'll notice that it appears up in the title bar as what we call the workbench variable. Once I've selected a variable in this way, the, all of the tools in the analysis toolbar on the left side operate on that variable. So if I generate a causes tree, I can see all of the variables that influence births. And I can do the same by generating a uses tree, which shows all of the things that births influences. These are live diagrams, so if I click on population here, it becomes the active workbench variable. And then I can generate a graph or a table or another tree showing influences in the model. Or I can use the document tool to see the equation for that variable. So by this method, I can quickly walk through the structure of the models. Uh, finding out, for example, what uh, influences deaths and explore how the behavior flows from the structure. And one of the most useful tools for doing that actually is what we call the strip graph, which shows a variable of interest, so here deaths, alongside all of the things that influence it. So I now have a series of graphs showing deaths and then various inputs to it. One is time, which is kind of trivial, population, a multiplier from crowding, a multiplier from food, and so on. And these correspond with the structure that I can see in my tree diagram. If things get a little bit cluttered, I can clean up just by visiting the Windows menu to close all of the output windows. And I'm back to my diagram. So let's do another run uh, in what we call Synthesim mode, which runs the model in real time. This is where things get fun. So I'm going to pick a new run name. And normally I'll have something in mind, uh, some particular experiment. Um, or scenario. And so I could be more descriptive, but I'm just going to call this uh, experiment. And I'll hit the Synthesim button to start the model. And what you see is a couple of things have happened. One is that I now have more traces on my graphs. And you'll notice that I also have behavior traces on my variables, so I can very quickly see what essentially everything in the model is doing. And I can even navigate through the various views to see what's happening in other portions of this model. And if I hover over a variable, I get a larger thumbnail graph that makes it a little bit easier to see what's going on. And the other thing that's happened is I now have sliders for all of my model parameters. Uh, so, for example, I can change the normal birth rate or the normal death rate. And as I'm doing that, I can see essentially instantaneously how that influences the behavior of the model on the graphs. And I can walk through other views, making corresponding changes elsewhere in the model. If I want to create a new run on the fly, I can just give it a new name. So I'll do a high resource endowment experiment in this world model. Call it high resources. And as soon as I start moving sliders, now that I've created the new name, I get a new scenario. So you can see on my uh, natural resources graph here, I now have a high resources scenario among my experiments. And if I'm getting a little bit busy on my graphs, I could get rid of perhaps the test case and the other experiment. So I can focus on just the base case against my current scenario. If I get partway into an experiment, or I'm looking at somebody else's experiments, and I realize I no longer remember 
what the changes were that generated the outcome I'm seeing, I can use the runs compare in the analysis toolbar to generate a list of the differences between the two, the first two runs that are loaded in the datasets tab of the control panel. And if I want to uh, start a new experiment from a clean slate, I can either just stop the run and start over, or I can use the reset buttons to reset either the slider I'm currently working with or all sliders back to their base case values that are embedded in the model. Vincent PLE is a sophisticated tool for many purposes and the price is right, but there are some models that it won't open and run because they contain sophisticated features. Uh, this one, for example, uses arrays or what we more typically call subscripts in Vensim to represent uh, additional detail. Other things that won't work in Vensim PLE include uh, sophisticated functions like find zero or simultaneous for simultaneous equation solving and uh, equations that use macros. Generally you can open these models but if you try to run them you'll get an error and you won't be able to fix this within the scope of PLE. In those cases you need the Vensim model reader. So I've switched to the model reader and let's open that same model. The model reader only opens models in our binary formats. That's a VMF which is just a model, a VPA which is a packaged application which we won't look at today, or a VPM, which is what we call a published model. A VPM is the same as an ordinary model, except that it might contain additional files that you need, spreadsheets with data, uh, what we call changes files containing default constants, or different tool sets. So I'm going to open this one. And you'll notice that my uh, analysis toolbar now looks a bit different because I've loaded a default toolbar that has some additional tools that was saved with this model. And you'll also notice that the uh, graphs here uh, use what's called uh, subscripts or arrays to represent prices, costs, capacity, and so forth for a competitive market with more than one firm. And I can control what's displayed. Let me fire this up first. We'll do a test run. And I'll run the model in Synthesim. Actually, I can't, uh, I need to overwrite that name, so I'm going to give it another one. I'll just call it Test 2. You'll notice I now have additional runs. And now, not only can I use the datasets control to cycle what runs are shown, and this will be a little clearer after I make some changes here. But I can also use the subscripts control to choose from a list of firms which one is active for my display and this will also influence what firm is active for the sliders on the diagram. And I can also switch firms by clicking in the body of the slider which lets me use a drop-down men menu to choose the active array dimension for that control. There are a couple other nice features here. One is that I have some additional tools in my toolbar for accessing a list of all of the lookup tables and all of the constants or parameters of the model. And I can use this to make changes so I could change the slope of the learning curve in this competitive dynamics model. And once I've made a set of changes using some mix of the sliders and these list controls, I can actually save the scenario that I've been working with, saving only the parameter and lookup changes, which is a very compact way of storing my scenario assumptions. 
So if I save this and I call it uh, the uh, uh, the uh, super smart firm, that becomes a changes file. Then I could restore all my sliders back to the way they were and later use that scenario as a starting point for a future experiment by using the load changes button, loading the super smart firm. And that'll reset the sliders, all the parameter changes, and get me started from my last stopping point. That's about all you need to know to get started running models with Vensim. There's a lot more depth to the professional tools. You can get more information in the extensive online help. If you're stuck, visit us at bensim.com for a link to the forum or email us at bensim at bensim.com. And we hope these great free tools are helpful to you.